Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Hey, Tea Sippers. So welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I have a special guest in the house today. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Deontay Earl Towner. I am a high school teacher and I'm a published author of three books. So thank you, Tea, so much for having me on your show. I feel so honored. And I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the community, shining light and speaking truth to power. Oh, you guys are more than welcome, and thank you for what you do as well. And I'm really excited that you were able to come onto my podcast. If you guys don't know, Mr. Deontay is somewhat of a celebrity <laughs> himself, okay? <laughs> he first slid into my DMs, I think about a year ago, like early 2019. And uh-huh. he was talking about how he watches my videos, and he's a teacher. And um, sometimes they play my videos in the classroom for, like, different discussions. Yes. And he was also on the Steve Harvey show. So he is one yes. of those dedicated teachers in the urban community in L.A. And, you know, if it was not for people like you, because I know sometimes being a teacher can be a thankless job. But just know that even if they don't tell you while they're in your classroom, they can always look back at you and what you've done for them and be grateful. And it's so hard to eat right now because I'm teaching from home. Mm-hmm. And sometimes when you go on live. I get that notification. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Okay, everybody, let's start silent reading right now because I need to watch the Lovely T show. So, (laughs) Lovely T, we love you over here in L.A. Just know that. We love you. My students love you. And I love you guys, too. And I'm just, I'm so happy to have y'all's teacher on my podcast. Hey. And what was so funny is that I remember when I first started getting into TikTok because I was like, what the hell is this TikTok thing? Right. You know, I kept hearing about it from my kids and, you know, other kids were like, you need to join TikTok. And I'm like, I think I'm too old. <laughs> yeah, it, like everybody, I don't care how old you are. You have people that are 85 years old yes. doing TikTok. You have people in jail doing, everybody's doing TikTok. Oh, yeah. And it was so funny because I mean, when I first started, I'm like, oh, shit, this is kind of fun. You know, I've always <laughs> danced and acted and did little skits. So I'm like, well, hell, this reminds me the old YouTube so I felt comfortable and then it was so funny because I think you had sent me a message and I clicked on your page I said wait hold up now you're TikTok famous too yeah 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 I had 453,000 followers Mm -hmm. in only about five to six months yeah Yeah, you were definitely doing your thing on TikTok and reporting news and doing skits. And and it was just really dope to watch. And I learned so much in the few months that I was on there. I don't I don't even TikTok. I barely even go on there anymore. But I learned like this was like this whole community. And it was like, you know, at the top of the TikTok community was like these A-list, you know, people. And they were like all kids. They were like literally 16, 17, 18, 19 year olds. And they're like some of the biggest influencers, not only on TikTok, but now in the world. Yeah, on the world. And they're getting invited to the NBA games, performing on ESPN. They're everywhere. Yeah, They're on Nike commercials everywhere. Oh, yeah. And they even made the Forbes list. And these kids were literally the top seven most successful uh, TikTokers Mm -hmm. and Addison Ray came in at number one and she had made like $5 million in one year. Um, Charlie uh, D'Amelio, she was number two and she made 4 million. Her sister Mm -hmm. Dixie was number three and she made 2.9 million. That is crazy. At the age of 16. It blows blows my mind. Like how much money, (laughs) kudos to them, but it really blows my mind to how much these top influence are making it so, a, a short amount of time. Yeah, because I remember when I first found out about Charlie, um, my son's girlfriend was telling me about her. And he, she was like, oh, my gosh, she has a Dunkin' Donut drink. And they were all going to Dunkin' Donuts to go get this drink. And I'm like, who the hell is Charlie? They're like, she's right. the biggest influencer <laughs> on TikTok. So I watched her. I said, okay, so she dances. How did she get this drink? So then at first I said, well, damn, maybe she's been TikToking and dancing since she was two. I don't know. Then they told right. me she'd only been around for a year. I was exactly. like, what? This was all so done in a year? That- 
Uh huh. And it's so interesting that this whole TikTok thing is different from like YouTube and Instagram. Because if you don't have TikTok, sometimes you don't know about these people. Right. And then you see them bleeding over into YouTube and then bleeding over to Instagram. And now they're taking over all these platforms. Oh, yeah. Because now they're bona fide YouTubers. She has like 8 million followers on YouTube. They have mm-hmm. a whole series. Her and her family just got blessed. With, uh, they're about to do a Hulu um, show. So that was announced the other day. So this. Oh, this, wow. Yeah. So they are really blowing up. And so I was doing a lot of research. And one of the things I noticed is on her bio, they're saying that, you know, Charlie D'Amelio is a American media personality and dancer. She was born in Connecticut. And they claim that she's been doing competitive dance for 10 years. So mm-hmm. then I went back to watch. I always like to see the backstory of like where people came from. And I went right. back to watch her first videos that she ever posted on TikTok. Um, I don't care what this bio says. That's not a con- she's not a competitive dancer. She doesn't right. have the skills of a of a dance. I know people who dance dance For and years, they take yeah, yeah right. and they take it seriously and, and they have rhythm and they have beat. Um, what I saw was just a teenage girl having fun, being goofy, you know, trying right. to dance. But what I noticed is as the months progressed and she gained more followers, her choreography became more tight. Mm -hmm. And her dancing got better and she would include friends in her videos and her friends would dance better. And you would see where they would redo original songs that they did, like, you know, months before, like, oh, well, let's do it better. And you could see the difference. And I know some of the controversy with her and like the Addison Rae is that Charlie really blew up from the renegade dance. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Charlie blew up from the renegade dance and that caused a big stir in the community because people are saying, you're making so much money and a profit off this dance, but you're not giving credit to the original creator. And mm-hmm. everybody kept leaving her comments in the comment section, like tag the original creator, tag the original creator. And then finally it was all over the news. It was all over, you know, the blogs. And then finally she gave um, tribute to the original creator. But then everybody was like, it's, it's a little bit too late. You made a profit off this young black girl. Mm hmm. Yeah, and you know, the thing is, such is life. Right. <laughs> you know, right. one one thing, I remember what my, what my good friend Rony used to always tell me is that favor is not fair. Fair, exactly. It's, it's just not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, Beyonce is a talented dancer and singer, but I'm, I'm nowhere near on her skill level and would never be. You know, right. so if she was blessed to be in a position where she was able to copy this dance and it blew up for her, it, that's just what it is. Right. And the thing and, is, like I but, always uh, tell people, we pick our celebrities. We pick mm-hmm. our influencers. And people never understood that. But every like, every view, every heart, all that counts to boost these people up in the algorithm. Right. So if you guys were really champion behind the white, um, excuse me, the black girl, the young black girl, I forget her name. Jalea. Jalea. Okay. Yes. So if people were really champion behind her and she's the one who created the dances she should have been getting those views period right but the problem with what i saw with tiktok a lot of times is that people who are more palatable are the ones who go through the algorithm right so you don't see my biggest my biggest Mm -hmm. complaint Mm -hmm. is that there is this book rule book back in the day when we all started youtube back in the wild wild west days that if you work hard enough then you will reach these levels of success that everyone else is getting. You'll get thousands of millions of followers. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing now on TikTok is that even if you work hard, there are just some people that are more set up for success than other people. So you have young people that are making up, creating all these dances, but they're not getting the sponsorship deals. Mm -hmm. Nobody's really reaching out to them. They're not getting the followers. And that's, and that's very telling to about the whole TikTok platform that they only want certain people to be on the popular page. Yeah. And the same can be said with YouTube. I mean, think about how long I've been doing YouTube news and commentary. Mm -hmm. There's really no difference besides race and gender between me and Philip DeFranco, who I, I love and I admire and I've met him several times. But we we've kind of just done the same thing throughout the years. But you mm-hmm. see, he is YouTube's news go to person. That is who is pushed through the algorithm. There's been times I broke stories before him, but he will get pushed through. 
you know, mm-hmm. and that's how it is with a lot of these platforms. And while it, it I, I go through it, you know, as, as a black right. woman. And I remember creator. you complained about that. You said mm-hmm. on your live that you're getting all these views, but sometimes you're still not getting pushed to the algorithm. Mm-hmm. And it just breaks my heart for younger creators that want to blow up one day. What hope is there for them if someone like Lovely P that's been putting in the work for years is sometimes not getting pushed through the algorithm? Yeah. I mean, even with the subscriber numbers where they'll unsubscribe people from my channel, it's like they're trying their hardest not to get me to a million. You know, right. people, I mean, people are like, you should have been at a million. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Right. You know, but there's nothing I can do. So what do I do? Do I sit and sulk on that? Or do I just work with what I have and keep grinding and keep doing me and knowing that eventually, you know, what I'm saying people will appreciate me and respect the work that I put in in spite of. The fact of not having a corporate backing, of not having somebody, you know, help to push me through an algorithm because I'm not as palatable as other people. Exactly. You know? And and to, to piggyback off of your point, because I was thinking about that, too, when I was preparing for the podcast on how much has changed from the time we were kids. And like mm-hmm. you said, we were always told work hard. Put in, put your best foot forward. And the more work that you put in, the more benefits you'll receive. And, and, and you know, these are the things you'll you'll see the 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 benefits of the fruits of your labor. That's how right. we were raised. But it's not like that anymore. I remember a few years ago, that was one of the things that we were preaching to young kids is, you know, who cares if somebody has a big following? Nobody's going to ask you on your job how many followers you have on Twitter. Just focused on school. But all that has shifted. Now your following can make or break you in the real world. Exactly. And it's, and it's so sad because I remember back in the day T and I'm going back down memory lane is that when you two first started, I miss the days where people would make, you know, song covers, play their little ukulele, report news or do, and do all that and only do it because that's what they love to do. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's all about going viral. And so you have a lot of people that are doing things, not because they love it, it's only because they want to go viral. They want the views. They want the followers. And this whole online thing has very became very convoluted. And it's and it's sad to see the route that social media is going. Yeah. And, you know, and the, the scary part is we don't know what's going to come of this two, three, four, five years from now. Because mm-hmm. you have a whole generation of kids who have literally been raised on YouTube. Like, my youngest is 15, so he was born right around the time of YouTube and everything else. He was born in 05. YouTube came, I think, in 2006. So wow, wow, that's day. Yeah, so he's always... (laughs) People said anything. Right. So (laughs) these kids have always been raised with social media, with, you know, YouTube, Facebook, things like that. And so the problem lies is, right now, this is all these kids know, So, so many Mm -hmm. kids now, and I'm sure you see this as a teacher, that's what they want to be now. They want to be Instagram influencers, YouTubers, Viners. Well, Vine's gone, but at one point they did. Vine's gone. Rest in peace Vine. TikTokers. (laughs) You know, they want to be social media famous because for them it's easy work. It's a bunch of damn money. You know, if you can get with the right sponsorship and the right brand deal. And why should I work hard and go to college for four years? Why should I go be a doctor when you have a 16 year old who's worth eight million dollars from literally dancing on TikTok? Exactly. And it's so sad because I was um, reading an article on L.A. Times and it says one to five young people, one to every five young people have depression, anxiety, Um, dealing with body issues. So say if you want to be, you know, YouTube, Instagram famous, but you're already dealing with all these emotional things in your life, imagine how much more heightened it's going to become when you get to that level of success on social media. And that's a lot of things that social media influencers don't talk about. It's like this package of once you reach a million followers or you become famous online, all your problems go away. And that's a false narrative that these kids are really buying into. It's like more money, more problems, more followers, more problems. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You deal with a lot of stuff because with the good, you know, when everybody loves you, it's a good feeling. 
but you yes. also have a segment of the population that hates you for no, not because you did anything to them, not because you took their man. You know what I'm saying? They really hate you because you are living what they want to live. You are living a lifestyle. You are being afforded something that they're not being afforded to. So they take all that anger and animosity out on you. And so, it's even harder mm-hmm. now because you have cancel culture. That's mm-hmm. always after just, everybody anything that you say like i've seen on your page where people will chop different segments in your video and make it as though you said something that you did not say Mm -hmm. and so what some of my students struggle with some of them are twitter famous and so what a lot of people are doing now with people's tweets is they're able to edit the tweets to make it look like you said something that you didn't say Mm -hmm. and so some of my students are like mr towner i don't get why people on social media hate me and i didn't even do anything and so it just comes to show that these kids' minds are so innocent that even when you don't do anything wrong, anything problematic, there's still a large section of people on social media that hate you and just want to take you down. Yeah, it's the truth. And I remember I had ran across the Reddit post, and I want to read it really quick. Um, I thought it was very interesting, but I respected the person's honesty. So they had written this on, on Reddit, and so they said... People hate social media influencers slash YouTubers because they are jealous of them. Then they go on to say, yeah, I know this is a bit of a harsh reality for a lot of you out there, but let's be honest. It's the truth. I personally feel this exact way and I didn't realize it until just now. I absolutely despise influencers and kids like Ryan's toy review or whatever his name is, because I'm jealous of their lives. If I could make a video twice a week getting brand new toys and make millions of dollars a year just for that, I'd be so fucking happy. Instead, here Mm -hmm. I am, 18, out of high school, having to pick a job which will stress me out the least and still allow me to survive. It sucks, and and I'm honestly jealous of them. And yes, I know a lot of it is also hate, Um, For them being vain or pretending to actually not have any problems in their life and stuff like that. But you guys know what I'm talking about because we all know underneath all of the hatred of their vanity and narcissism, we wish we could live their lives and we hate that they're doing better than us. Mm, And that came from a teenager. And it it speaks volumes. That's real. Yeah. It speaks volumes. And I think, you know, a lot of people don't want to acknowledge that part. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.